Hello, friends. Welcome back. My name is Ramon. How are you today? It finally happened. Fenty skin finally dropped. As of right now, when I'm recording this, it's actually the day before launch, July 30th. But yesterday we did get a early access to the launch if you sign up for the email thing. But basically on Monday, I believe it was, Fenty just announced the line. They went through, Rihanna did her teaser trailer. We saw all the products unveiled one by one. We saw all the ingredients list for everything. All the bigger influencers, not me, who got the PR not me, talked about their thoughts of the products that they've been using for about a month now. And so at this point, the day before launch, there's a pretty concise opinion on each of the items that Fenty Skin launched. So by the time we have this uploaded, it will be the day of launch. So that way people can order with a bit more of an informed opinion. But basically I'm gonna go through product by product as someone who did not get the PR. So my opinions are in no way biased because Fenty is not paying me any money. And as a formulation student, cosmetic sciences student, go through item by item, talk about each item separately in terms of what the formulations are bringing to the item who the item would be best for and if the item is actually worth it. Before we get into the video, I'm going to ask to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so that you know when I post more Fenty Friday content. Give the video a thumbs up if you like these Fenty Friday videos. And down below, did you order any of the Fenty Skin items yet? Are you going to? And did you have as hard of a time as I did ordering them? Also, the day of Fenty Skin launch, July 31st, is my birthday. And so stick around towards the end of the video. I'm going to have a fun little <laughs> birthday surprise. Basically, just kind of giving a little bit of a breakdown of the line and launch overall before I get into each individual product. Fenty Skin launched. There's three products, the cleanser, the fat water, and the sunscreen moisturizer. It's a very basic, decently well-rounded line. Rihanna in no way reinvented the wheel, but what she did, in my opinion, was she introduced a very basic, very well-rounded skincare line, mainly a morning routine for a really wide audience. The hope, honestly, is that people that are hyper Fenty Skin are going to be introduced to these products, be able to be introduced to really great product formulations, really great ingredients for skin health, daily sunscreen use. The line in itself is kind of designated for a more in the middle skin type, but depending on what your actual skin type is, you can tailor the launch to fit your skin's needs as well. Something that Susan Yara pointed out in her Fenty Skin video was that the people that are getting introduced to this line, especially Rihanna's target demographic, which is like teens, early 20s, are doing a lot better than we were back in the day. Because back in our day, it was Noxzema, it was clean and clear, it was the Clinique three-step system, which... And so here, Rihanna is launching this really great line of products at a semi-affordable price point. We'll get to that. But it's all around a really great launch. If you watch my other Fenty Skin videos, you know that I was hoping for the most with this launch. But in retrospect, looking back at things, I'm actually happier that she didn't do what I wanted her to do. This line is very approachable. Anyone can jump into this line without fear of their skin being compromised or reacting negatively to the ingredients in the products for the most part. And it's overall just a really, really safe and sound skincare routine to start with. Still wanna see more from the line though. I took notes on each of the products. We're gonna break down what they are, the ingredients, and the overall bottom line for each one. At this point, people have released their Fenty Skin videos talking about their month long usage of the products. I'm coming at this as someone who hasn't touched these at all. So I'm just looking at the overall formulation of each product, what people have said overall to kind of tailor what each product would be good for skin type wise, and then my overall thoughts on each item as someone who has not touched them yet. I have ordered them though. So Total Cleanser is the first item from the list. It's a semi-gentle, really nourishing, non-stripping cleanser that technically lathers as opposed to foams. On the Fenty Skin website, she distinctly says makeup wipes canceled and in that regard she's claiming that the cleanser itself is going to be able to break down most if not all of long wear makeup oil dirt on the skin and cleanse it away in a very gentle manner it doesn't foam it lathers due to the surfactants that they use in the cleanser which are mostly coconut based but Rion herself emphasized that the first step in having really great quality skin is proper cleansing and so with that she wanted a cleanser that wouldn't be too stripping that would still nourish her skin but have the surfactants necessary to cleanse the skin and get the pores clean it also claims that it will control shine throughout the day which it's a big claim for cleanser. Ingredients list. And some of these ingredients are going to be present in a lot of the products. Every time an ingredient pops up, I'll kind of mention it more thoroughly the first time I see it. And then as we see it again in other products, I'll just kind of briefly touch on what the actual ingredient does. But acerola, aka Barbados cherry, is a primary ingredient that's featured in a lot of these products. And basically, it's just a very antioxidant and vitamin C rich ingredient. You have ginkgo biloba, which helps to control oil production. And that paired with the green tea that's in there also helps to provide some antioxidants and soothing properties to the skin as well. You also have quince and fig which in themselves offer really great skin conditioning and humectant properties. And then some other ingredients they don't necessarily call out on the actual product description, but are in the ingredients list are tocopherol acetate, butadiene glycol, and caprylyl glycol, which are both humectants. Tocopherol acetate is another antioxidant. So basically you have a very humectant rich, very gentle, very non-stripping, antioxidant rich, soothing cleanser. In terms of the makeup removing properties, I'm not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. Seeing other people's videos, they basically recommend Go in once, use the total cleanser as you would a bomb cleanser, put some in your hand, massage that onto a dry face to kind of break down makeup. Go in and start introducing water to make that into a little bit more of a lather to break down the makeup, the sunscreen, the dirt, the impurities. 
rinse that off. Go in and do another cleanse now on your clean skin. There's no way this is gonna cleanse your skin or move makeup all in one go. You will have to do a double cleanse. Once I get the products in, I will do a demo of that, see how it breaks down a full coverage, water resistance, sweat resistance, long wear Fenty Beauty Beat, but I'm not saying it won't. Most of the Fenty skin people that have gotten it says it actually does do well to remove most of that stuff with the exception of like really hardcore waterproof makeup. But basically she went through and created a really gentle cleanser that wasn't going to compromise, but instead nourish and provide protection for a skin barrier. So it's gonna cleanse your skin without leaving you really dry and stripped and make sure that you have nice moisture retention in your skin that you need. And so next is the fat water. This is the one that everyone's kind of the most excited about. The one that most people hyped up that I've seen so far also has the most uproar about the ingredients list but we'll get to that basically for the fat water it says it's going to refine your pore texture reduce your dark spots even out your skin tone and it's a two-in-one toner plus serum which equals an essence in my head we'll get to that they also claim that through repeated use you are reducing oil production and the appearance of pores refining skin texture and brightening the complexion all while hydrating the skin and basically with that that is that's an essence. An essence, in effect, is active ingredients in a very hydrating vehicle. Hydrating vehicle is basically a toner. All those active ingredients are ingredients that give your skin benefits. And that's basically like a serum. That's an essence. And so with those together, you are giving your skin a lot of benefits in a very lightweight, really hydrating vehicle. And that's going to help anything you put on top of it, if Fenty launches more serums down the line, or just your moisturizer or your sunscreen, to work more effectively and sit a lot better on your skin. So going through the ingredients list for this one, niacinamide is a star ingredient of this. And niacinamide in itself is a star ingredient period um, based off what the website says it helps reduce the look of pores even skin tone and fight shine so this is kind of doing the most of what the marketing on the packaging says but expanding on what like a niacinamide itself does which i've done entire videos talking about gold standard actives like niacinamide it helps to increase ceramide synthesis of the skin and collagen production in the skin and ceramide it helps with the skin barrier collagen helps with plumping skin to reduce the look of fine lines and wrinkles it also helps to control oil and semen production as the website actually claims but this also in effect along with anti-inflammatory properties also has an anti-acne ability to it. So you're hydrating your skin, protecting your skin, reducing inflammation and irritation in the skin. So overall, this is going to do a lot for your skin, period. This is doing a lot of that skin brightening, pore refining, texture refining property of the fat water. On top of that, you got witch hazel. And witch hazel was the big point of contention for a lot of people. Here's the deal. It's one thing to have an ingredient in an ingredients list and think like, oh, that is not a good ingredient, kind of. And most of the thing with that is just that witch hazel is kind of an astringent property to it. This actually serves a purpose in this formulation for a reason. But what you gotta look you can't just pigeonhole onto one specific ingredient and be like that's bad and ignore everything else around it this kind of goes back to why alcohol and skincare isn't bad either alcohol and sunscreens for example serves a very specific purpose but when paired with other things like humectants antioxidants skin nourishing ingredients those are going to combat the negative effects of alcohol which still in that point is not bad so when you have this witch hazel in this fat water you got to look at what else is in this formulation to kind of coexist with the witch hazel to kind of counteract the negative effects of witch hazel which We'll actually get to it in a second. So witch hazel in itself, most people don't like it or think it's bad just because it has astringent properties. But looking into the form of witch hazel in this and researching more on witch hazel nowadays, that's kind of different. So witch hazel like extract of some variety and it's a water extract, which means it's a more mild form to give more mild effects of witch hazel. It's an astringent, as I mentioned, that can refine pores and control shine. But witch hazel also has antioxidant properties to it. It's also anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, which means anti-acne as well, to go with the niacinamide. It's essentially a distillate of witch hazel hazel distillates especially nowadays but especially the one in the formulation are alcohol free and that was a big thing too back in the day was that in order to get witch hazel the distillation process required alcohol so essentially you were putting alcohol on your skin as well which is not good but it's 2020 ways of acquiring and synthesizing these ingredients is a lot more gentle and beneficial for the skin so overall this formulation especially paired with everything else in this ingredients list this witch hazel actually doesn't have all the bad properties people say it's doing the pore refining properties and the astringent properties of being able to control shine throughout the day but you're also getting some anti-acne properties and antioxidant properties with it as well and again you're pairing it with a lot of really good ingredients some of those good ingredients acerola again that Bayesian cherry which is going to give you a lot of antioxidant kick you also have lemon myrtle which is another antioxidant with some anti-acne and anti-inflammatory inflammatory benefits fig again antioxidant soothing agents you have cactus water which is another skin conditioning humectant property in the toner and then you have japanese raisin which the website claims to help detox detoxing skincare to me isn't really a thing necessarily in reality when i looked at the ingredients skin benefits i just got that it was anti-inflammatory and antioxidants but the detox in this and why rihanna actually used it slash the like historical use of it was that it actually helped to reduce the amount of ethanol in the bloodstream so it can help you with like a hangover but for me that doesn't necessarily that reason doesn't 
doesn't fit with this skincare product for me it's just you have anti-inflammatory antioxidant properties so bottom line you have an essence and it's a very very nourishing essence it's going to give you really great pore benefits skin texture benefits skin brightening benefits oil control benefits anti-acne benefits but also give you really nice hydration nourishing boost it's going to be really nice for your skin. Most of the benefits for this are really great for normal to oily skin types, especially more acne prone. But if you have more dry skin, layering this up a little bit, kind of in the Korean seven skin method where you layer seven skins or toners on top of each other and really light layers to build up hydration underneath a moisturizer is going to benefit you as well. Ignore the astringent benefits of the witch hazel because they're coupled with a lot of other humectant skin conditioning ingredients. Depending on how you use this, it'll be good for every skin type. And me being more oily, acne prone, I'm actually really excited to try this. Niacinamide is a really great ingredient. My skin benefits really well from it. Anytime I take it out of my skin routine, I notice my pore texture, my congestion gets a lot worse. So this is what I'm most excited to try. And last on the list is going to be the Hydra Visor, that moisture SPF slash SPF moisturizer, however you want to see it. This is the one that I have the most thoughts of personally, but let's get into the claims. Fenty Skin itself says that it offers light as air hydration, invisible sun protection. It'll defend and brighten skin while reducing the look of pores. It, that it's reef safe because it's free of oxybenzone and octanoxates, which are two UV filters that can be irritating for skin. And some people say it is unsafe for coral reefs just because of some studies, but I have opinions on that. Rihanna herself highlights that the number one most important thing for healthy glowing skin is hydration and sun protection. So she knows what she's talking about. It specifically is an SPF 30 broad spectrum sunscreen, which means it protects you from the full range of UVA and UVB rays. We'll get into that. And that it's a great base for prepping skin for makeup and it won't affect the makeup application or the wear of it. Recently, yeah, the main claims that the brightened skin refines pore texture instantly and over time, which we'll get into, and it reduces the look of dark spots. Ingredient highlights in the ingredient list, um, Kalahari Melon is one of the first things she mentions. It essentially is an antioxidant that offers some hydration and skin conditioning. Niacinamide, which again, talking about all the stuff it does, there's also a benefit where it can have some photoprotective properties in itself. You have hyaluronic acid and aloe, which hydrate and condition the skin. Aloe in itself is also an anti-inflammatory ingredient, which is something I really like in my sunscreens, considering what UV exposure and damage can do to the skin. Baobab, which hydrates in skin conditions. It also has some anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. And you have tocopherol and tocopherol acetate, which are both versions of vitamin E, which is another antioxidant, which has some UVB protective quality as well. Not in itself necessarily, but I like to have it with sunscreens because I feel that it helps boost that UVB protection. A really interesting ingredient that I stumbled upon was gluconolactone, which is a PHA, a polyhydroxy acid, which is actually an exfoliating ingredient that is safe for even the most sensitive skin, just because it won't penetrate as deeply and cause as much irritation. So that is going to help with some of that smoothing, brightening that the sunscreen talks about, but it also doesn't cause any sun sensitivity. So it's actually good to have in a sunscreen. And also it in itself is a humectant. So it helps to, again, pull moisture, draw moisture to the surface of the skin to really plump and hydrate your skin. Beyond that, you also have things like glycerin, safflower, oleosomes, hyaluronic acid, butylene glycol. All of those are really great humectants to have to really hydrate and plump up the skin. And then you have Buchu, and Buchu is a sebum controller. So that paired with the niacinamide is going to help control shine and oil throughout the day. You have some anti-acne properties. You have really great antioxidants, which I love to see in sunscreens. And then let's get to the sunscreen ingredients themselves. So this is an organic, aka a chemical sunscreen. It does not have the more sensitizing UVB filters, like I mentioned, oxybenzone and octanoxate. But the primary UV filters in this is avobenzone for UVA protection, which is really great UVA protection. And then you have homosalate and octosylate for the UVB protection. You have to deal with those. Those are either very weak are very unphotostable UV filters. Even though they have the antioxidants to help bump and boost the photoeffective properties of them, I still don't necessarily feel like that's the best necessarily, especially because I don't have an ingredient specifically in this, which has the explicit property of stabilizing the UV filters. That, and it's also only an SPF 30, which I expect more out of mineral or inorganic sunscreens. With organic sunscreens, you have the capability of really bumping up the UV protection, so you get higher SPF values, and I don't know why that's not the situation with this. It's a little bit odd to me. Someone mentioned that it could heighten in the chance of white cats for deeper skin types, but I don't personally agree with that. I've seen really high photoprotective sunscreens that are chemical filters that are US approved that don't have any white casts on deeper skins. So I don't know about that. But overall, I'm just gonna celebrate the fact that Rihanna herself, first launch, first go, was like sunscreen is important. And if you go to the Fancy Skin website and scroll through to how to use Homegirl says, first and foremost, sunscreen is the most important thing you can have to protect your skin. She has a whole frequently asked question section, debunking myths, answering questions about sunscreen, which is amazing. She's like, everyone should use it every day. This is an organic chemical sunscreen that is safe for all skin types. That's going to have no white cast. Even the most darkest of skins needs to use sunscreens. And here's why she did that. And that in itself is something I have to celebrate. The sunscreen itself overall, it offers really great protection. It has really nice formulation to it. The UV filters aren't my favorites, 
but they're not going to sensitize. And that being said, it just goes to really reinforce you need to apply the proper amount, roughly a quarter teaspoon for your face, your ears, and your neck to get the photo protection that is on the container. But on top of that, it's going to also stress, like she says in the thing as well, that you need to really reapply to maintain that protection throughout the day, especially if you're being exposed to high amounts of UV. We have the niacinamide and the gluconolactone to really help to resurface, brighten, and refine the texture of your skin, the antioxidants, and all the other stuff to help nourish and soothe and repair the skin as well. And you have the buchu as well, the niacinamide again to help kind of control sleeping protection and help to prevent any acne and breakouts so overall i'm like actually really into this the only thing i'm not a big fan of is the price point which i'll get to in a second so overall the main point of this was that rihanna really did this and created this line specifically with dark skin black skin brown skin in mind first and foremost the ingredients in this are going to be great for protecting those skin types for really refining the texture brightening up the skin types giving you the most bang for your buck essentially she sought to have gender inclusivity in this saying that skincare is for everyone this is for men and for women like men cannot be crusty like wash your faces put on sunscreen everything that she has is beard friendly it's brown skin friendly it's everyone friendly which i have to celebrate she really wanted to create a really nice and sensorial experience overall so there is fragrance there is dyes i'm someone who i personally like fragrance in this if you have really really sensitive skin types I would say avoid fragrance as much as you can, but don't necessarily discount this. Because again, look at what else is in the formulations. Look at what else she's pairing them with. If you don't like fragrance, it's all on you. I'm going to be using this as someone who I actually really like and appreciate the sensory of having fragrance in my skincare. The main points I'm not happy with though is I still think the price point for some of the things is a little bit high. The cleanser, it's great. I really wish it would have been a second cleanse. I'm going to try this out though as a double cleanser in itself, see what happens. The fat water, actually that's the most decently priced item. I've seen essences that I use regularly go up into like the $30, $40 range. So I'm not pressed about that. But then the sunscreen, it's $35 for only 50 mil. And when you factor in how much you want to wear to get full protection and then reapplication throughout the day, I'm a little bit worried about what that's going to look like in terms of usage. I'm expecting maybe a six week to eight week time frame on one little thing. That And if you noticed, she really did that when it came to packaging. She wanted really eco-earth friendly packaging. So the component for the sunscreen, the inside actually comes out. So you just replace the actual SPF part of it. That's still $30 regardless. So that's more on the luxury end of it. For me, sunscreen needs to be more readily accessible to the most amount of people so i don't firmly recommend luxury sunscreens like this but if it's going to get you to wear sunscreen get it just because i'm going to celebrate again that rihanna really reinforced and is really pressing for the fact that everyone should wear sunscreen every day no matter what and she goes on to stress that you also have to factor in the fact that sunscreen is going to help protect you and minimize the look of hyperpigmentation and darkness in the skin dark spots in the skin i mean and help to support the benefits of skin brightening that like the niacinamide and all those things have in the skincare sunscreen for me is like a save as button for fixing skin problems overall and just with the implication that she had to make this for us audiences i can't be upset about the sunscreen filters i wish there was a higher spf value but overall what she did with it was great it's the most diverse sunscreen she could have come out with for people that are pressed that it wasn't a mineral sunscreen if you are pressed about that understand there is a privilege to being able to say i only exclusively use mineral sunscreens and not have an issue with mineral sunscreens having a white cast on you not being readily available in your skin color that's a privilege she came out with like organic sunscreen because that would be the most universally acceptable for all skin types and then i have to celebrate that being said if fenty skin were to come out with a very wide range of shades of mineral sunscreens that are tinted I'd be very interested in that so with that yeah that's my thoughts on the fenty skin launch it is ordered it was a hassle to order it trust me but i have it and on top of that i actually ordered a double set just because again july 31st today is my birthday and i figured why not else than give someone else a birthday present there's more info coming on the giveaway just because i've never done one and i don't know exactly how to do one so i'll figure that out by the time this is uploaded but head down to my instagram at glow by ramon for further details on the giveaway but yeah thanks for watching guys uh let me know down below again did you order it what are you most excited about what are your thoughts on the launch still once you break down the ingredients, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you know when I post more Fenty Fridays. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys.